Tilo, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are not live, but you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Um, don't forget, we do got Patreon. We post five days a week. We also got merch. Twitch.com is where you can catch any of the lives. The usernames at the bottom of the screen. And this is a warning. Just in case. I don't know what it's detailed and whatever we're watching, man. Um, This is TLDR News. You know, I be, I be on my news stuff occasionally. You know what I'm saying? Why devolution... What is that? Is that de devolution? It's on the rise in England? I don't... Alright, tell me. Because I'm very ignorant about it. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. Talk to me though. Thursday, England voted in the 2024 local elections, with a major twist. This year, three brand new Metro Mayor positions were up for grabs under new devolution deals, and devolution. next year there'll be four more. This means that after May 2025, over half of England's population will live in an area covered by devolution deals, equating what is devolution deals? to 57% of its economic output. So in this video, we'll take a look at the history of devolution in England, why it's currently on the rise, and what this might lead to next. Ma'am, start over. Hold Thursday, on. England voted Last in the 2024 Thursday. local elections, with a major twist. This year, three brand new Metro Mayor positions were up for grabs under new devolution deals, and next year, there'll be four more. This means that after May 2025, over half of England's population will live in an area covered by devolution deals, equating to 57% of its economic output. So in this video, we'll take a look at the history of devolution in England, why it's currently on the rise, and what this might lead to next. By devolution. But first, let's explain what we mean by devolution. Thank you, thank you, because this is where I'm lost at. You know what I'm saying? When we say devolution, we mean the transfer of powers away from central government in Westminster to local government elsewhere. Oh, There's lots of different forms of no, devolution. No, let me read. Get off the screen myself. Let me put me over here real quick. Devolution, statutory delegation of powers from the central government of the sovereign state to the governor to the govern at the subnational level, such as regional or local level. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. So in other words, the power is taken from the umbrella and given directly to the local. All right. Government in Westminster to local government right. elsewhere. There's lots of different forms of devolution, but in this video, we'll focus mainly on devolution through metro mayors, who run what's called mayoral combined authorities. Now, the map on screen highlights the 10 pre-existing mayoral combined authorities in England, plus the three brand new MCAs and the four Dang. to be created in Dang. 2025. While most of these are metropolitan areas, the government is now also devolving powers to rural areas too, and promised in its 2022 leveling up white paper that by 2030, every part of England that wants one will have a devolution deal. So to understand how this has all come about, we've got to go back to the late 90s. In 1998, under the Labour Prime Minister, Tony Blair, the UK government devolved executive and legislative powers to each of Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland through national right, parliaments. Right. Around the same time, it also held a successful referendum in London, which created England's first regional combined authority and Metro Mayor in 1999. However, the idea of devolution to England's other regions wasn't gaining much traction. The then Deputy Prime Minister John Prescott proposed a new regional policy with more devolution, but it lacked wider backing within the Labour Party, and ultimately led to a failed referendum in the North East in 2004, in which 78% of people voted against a regional assembly. After this, regional devolution in England basically sank into the background. The major turning point came in November 2014, 
when the UK government announced its first devolution deal with the combined authority of Greater Manchester, followed by a more Greater limited Manchester. deal with Cornwall in 2015. In Cornwall, okay. Since then, England has seen a steady rise in mayoral combined authorities, which were created in nine more regions between 2015 and 2019. I would, see, here's my thing about this. Like, I would think y'all would want this. Because now y'all not a part of a stack of papers for somebody who's handling a larger group of uh, area. You know what I'm saying? Now, it's like the effort is centrally localized from right within the, the state is what I'm going to call it. I don't know what y'all call it out there. You know what I'm saying? I would think that would be beneficial to a lot of areas, you know? And we'll cover another seven by 2025. So now let's move on to why devolution is on the rise in England. Talk to well, me. its advocates argue that local devolution can lead to better policy making, better economic and social outcomes, and improved democracy. Right. So the first argument for devolution in England is that it often leads to better policy making. Local leaders and metro mayors know their areas far better than cabinet ministers based in Westminster and can make better informed decisions right. on spending priorities. Ex see? See? Hey, listen. It only take me a minute to get un to, to get understanding, but I have it now, and it, it it makes perfect sense, doesn't it? Who would be against this? They can also take a longer term approach than Westminster MPs, who are subject to the so called ministerial merry go round that often leads to delays, changes, and ultimately higher costs on projects or even outright cancellation, like with the northern leg of HS. Exactly, and now it's more focused. From inside, of course, the local, you know, y'all know what y'all need. Too. Anyway, a great example of strong local policy making is Greater Manchester's investment in public transport. Along with other English cities like Leeds and Liverpool, Manchester's economic... Oh my God, my three favorites. <laughs> yeah. My fault. Development has been held back partly by inadequate local transport infrastructure with a House of Lords committee report in 2022 noting that poor public transport in big cities diminishes the agglomeration benefits and, by extension, their productivity and economic performance. Facts. Under Metro Mayor Andy Burnham, the city has introduced a new and effective London-style public transport network called the B Network, made up of franchised electric buses, cycle lanes and trams, with eight new commuter rail... This is for Manchester, of course, right? Isn't Manchester the, the second biggest city in... Or is it, um... ...lines to be added by 2030. Now, the next reason for regional devolution is it can improve economic and social outcomes. Devolution encourages integration between councils and local authorities, so that the key drivers of economic growth, that's transport, skills, housing, and planning, are better aligned. In the 10 years since its first devolution deal with the government, Greater Manchester has seen steady improvements in the local economy, industrial growth, and the creation of... of new jobs are better aligned. In the 10 years since its first devolution deal with the government, Greater Manchester has seen steady improvements in the local economy, industrial growth, and the creation of new jobs. Between 2013 and 2023, Manchester's employment rate rose more than 10 percentage points to 74%, while the overall... This is during um, COVID right here. COVID took a strong dip, <laughs> but I had to start over. So basically, COVID set us back, or set Manchester back specifically, to the year 2016. It sent you, COVID sent y'all's economic, economic system, or the employment rate, I'm sorry, which is, you know, economic, you know, economically set y'all back three years. When y'all was at the peak and then we y'all ju just getting back up there, just passed it in 2002, at the end of 2002. Now y'all back on the rise. Okay, what's the blue line? UK employment rate in the same period stayed flat. Similarly, Birmingham's tech sector is booming thanks to more investment from West Midlands Mayor Andy Street, growing by an average of 7.6% a year. Yeah, there we go, Birmingham. Is Birmingham the second biggest or is Manchester? between 20 West Midlands Mayor Andy Street, growing by an average of 7.6% a year between 2014 and 2020, the fastest in the UK. 
Moreover, employment opportunities in Birmingham in tech and science grew by 55% in the decade up to 2020 and are forecast to grow further in future. Finally, devolution also improves participation and trust in democracy. Metro mayors generally enjoy far higher approval ratings within their own regions than MPs do at the national level, suggesting that local- This is how we do it here in the States. And I'm not saying every state is great, but you know, this is, it, it's more, it, it also for the cabinet, it's gonna spread out the blame. It's gonna, a lot of blame is gonna be taken for them. And if, if your current area is doing terrible, you blame your local mayor, basically. Blame them. Don't come to us. Blame them is what they say. Local expertise is valued. For instance, an Ipsos poll ahead of the mayoral elections last week showed 59% of Mancunians had a favourable view of Burnham compared to just 15% with an unfavourable view. And 34% of people in the West Midlands had a favourable view of Mayor Andy Street compared to 18% unfavourable. These numbers are far higher than typical public approval towards the UK's national politicians, which rarely exceeds 30%. So with devolution on the rise in England, what might happen next? Well, Fine. the most likely outcome in the near future seems to be more devolution, for example, through new funding arrangements. Greater Manchester and the West Midlands have both recently signed new trailblazer deals with the government, which will see them move to single settlement funding that's more similar to the single block grant that's given to Scotland and Wales. Essentially, this means that funding will be allocated based on social factors and levels of need, similar to the way EU funding used to be allocated to deprived areas pre-Brexit. I, I feel like, I don't, is there any, like, as I'm listening to this, is there any, I hear all the pros, are there any cons? Of course there is, and, you know, mayors get greedy, um, embezzlement, all type of stuff, funds not being distributed properly, blah, 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 but, like, overall and that's just my United States of America view what happens here but like overall I don't know the UK Chancellor Jeremy Hunt has also indicated that the single settlement deal should be available to all combined authorities in time Liverpool has already thrown its hat in the ring to be next in line and the mayors of West Yorkshire and South Yorkshire have also reportedly requested deeper devolution deals too Another future possibility is indirect devolution through parliamentary or electoral reforms. Metro mayors like Manchester's Burnham and Liverpool's Steve Rotherham are proponents of banning the whip system used in Parliament, which essentially forces that? MPs to toe the party line or risk expulsion. Oh my. They argue that with the whip system, the power given to elected politicians basically evaporates the second they set foot in Parliament, disconnecting them from their constituents and forcing MPs to vote for things they don't believe in. They also argue that a shift... So, so the whip situation, <laughs> y'all don't want to be Muppets no more. Y'all don't want to have be ventriloquist dummies no more, is what they saying. Y'all don't want to have... Y'all don't want to have... Y'all want to get control back. ...to proportional representation, rather than the current system of first-past-the-post voting, would empower places and remove the public funding skew which favours London and the South East. Ultimately, though, it's still early days for English devolution, and we'll have to wait and see if it pays off everywhere. Regardless, a trend is certainly underway towards more widespread and deeper devolution, and the success of Greater Manchester's experiment over the last decade does seem to offer an optimistic model for England's other city regions going forward. There's definitely going to be some new developments with this story, though, so keep an eye out for future developments. Anyway, the best way to stay on top of the news is with Nebula News. If if you haven't heard, we every day independent smart. Mm -mm, that's it, huh? TLO, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. This is like UK is like my little second home, so I like to stay up to date on the things that happen over there. So I, I, I don't know. I don't see any cons, like any blazing cons that aren't already to be expected. But like, y'all, let me know how y'all feel about it in the comments and things of that nature.